Madison. All right, folks. Homebrew 101. I'm making a Mexican cerveza. Instructions. You don't need those. You got me. So what I'm doing here, boiling two gallons of water, U.S. gallons of water in my pot. We're bringing it to a boil. I'm going to add a brew enhancer. That is 60% dextrose corn sugar and 40% maltodextrin. So there's about two cups there. You do the math. I am heating up my liquid extract. It's warm water. It's a little easier to pour out, you got to mean. So that's what I got going right now. It is a waiting game, folks. This is easy, easy as one, two, three. You know what I mean? Again, Mexican cerveza, Muntins. Um, I guess we will be back for um, round two. Oh, that is, uh, to be exact, that's, my, that's the muttons right there, the Mexican cerveza, and that is 3.3 um, pounds of just breeze, uh, liquid and malt extract. It's light. Light, light, light. So, they were out of the pills in, and so this will be the next best thing. Easy as that. So you want to be sure, bam. Breeze, CBW, pure malt extract, golden light, LME, 3.3 pounds, baby. Get her done. All right, folks. I'm gonna wait for this stuff, this to come to a boil, and I'll show you the next step. And it's a uh, home brew 101, baby. Easy as that. Here's my fermenting vessel, six and a half gallon. Got a lid and an airlock for it. I got a carboy out in my in my beer fridge out there, so that's a five gallon. And I got a, a three gallon better bottle. Uh, that's in my closet right now with my apple wine. So, um, take care. I'll see you next time. All right, folks. Daddy. Being as I'm making a Mexican cerveza. Daddy. I think it just fits. I put on my Lucha Libre mask. Daddy. Let me tell you how it is. Water is just about boiling. So, let's see if I can do this with uh, one hand. I'm going to take my brew enhancer I made. That is 60% dextrose. Uh... 40% uh, maltodextrin. It's just going to add a little body, some head retention, all that good stuff. So, boom, boom. Got my stuff. Bang, bang. All right. Let's pour that in there nice. Boom, set that aside. Take my paddle. Everything is sterilized. Ah, oh, this is everything. Sterilize your stuff. Stir that bad boy up. And that'll add just a little bit. I mean, it might not even matter. Just a little bit more alcohol, which is no big deal. If I really wanted to pump it up, I'd pour some more corn sugar in there. And uh, But uh, laggers are not known for their uh, alcohol content so it'll probably be around four four percent alcohol just like any other lager all right folks so I got that in there oh uh, this comes to a boil which uh, should be anytime soon I'm gonna start adding my liquid malt extract or if you had Dry malt extract definitely work. Um, people at my homebrew store said liquid is just much better, Daddy. better taste. There's my little mini mini Daddy. brewer. Buddy, Daddy cooking beer. Daddy cooking some beer. I got my hydrometer. My little right there. That tests the uh, gravity, the original gravity before you pitch your yeast in there. That's going to tell you pretty much uh, the original gravity. Then, you know, when you're done fermenting it, primary, 
get your final gravity rating, tell your alcohol content or whatever, all uh, that good stuff, do a little bit of math, you can get your alcohol content. Um, I'm just learning this stuff right here, so, pretty basic though, pretty basic, I know you guys like the math, don't be scared. You guys can read. Oh my video, my camera ain't the best on here, so I'm sorry. Pretty easy, basic, simple. Your milk's all gone, yeah. Well, you're gonna have to wait for Daddy to do this so I can get you some more. <laughs> all right, folks. This is a very, it's pretty boring. I mean, not to uh, to be videotaping it for you guys is probably boring, but me, I love it. So it's entertaining to me. I'm learning. I'm making my own beer, and you know, with my fingers crossed, it's gonna be some good beer. So. uh that's how we do it around here. I am going well, to see if I can do this with one hand. I just got to look out. Get my, I'll get my shirt all gunked up. I'm going to try to open this lid. This stuff is stickier than sticky. It's pure syrup. You can see that. I mean, that's just like, yeah. That is good. If you ever um, made a large batch of oatmeal in your house, this is real good oatmeal. This stuff, man, it makes it look the same. This stuff is so good. It's like candy. It is delicious. It is, mm, It's called liquid malt ex extract. Great stuff. All right. Man, that's just warm water for my faucet. You know, loosen that liquid up a little bit so it's not so sticky, so it'll run a little better. Look at that, I have Christmas time cookies right there for the holidays from my mama, one of the best chefs in the world. You yeah. got my lady, oh, you can't see over there, no light. Over there chilling, she watching something, some funny cartoon. All right, folks. Now, when you pour this malt in there, you're going to want to take it off the burner. Straight up. I should. Hmm, how am I going to do this? I should. Um, if I just pour my water into my bucket and go from there. That'll be, hey, you want a video here? You gonna help me? No. You gotta help me. No. I only got two arms, lady. No. So I'm gonna take this hot water, pour it into this big bucket. I'm gonna pour this stuff into it, both of them. Mix it up good. Then I'm gonna take filtered water and top this bad boy off to about the six gallon line, which is about, I think, between here and here. Look at her. She over there laughing like it's funny. You like my mask? I'm Mexican right now. I'm Lucha Libre right here. Lucha Libre at home brewing. 101, baby. Ooh, look at that. Big mess. Take up your mess, girl. Please. I love you. Don't clap about it. Pick your mess up, honey. Please. All right, folks. No. I'm going I'm to try to do this with one hand. <laughs> Which I'm going to have to, my bucket on again, I'm going to have to put this down for a hot second. I'm going to have to. So, hot water into the bucket. So I got my water in there. I don't know if my video turned off. I think my daughter did it. Get out, honey. Yeah, so I put my water in there. Put my liquid malt extract in both cans. And now I'm just stirring all the water up. And I'm going to top this off to uh, six gallons, as I said. 
excuse me, six U.S. gallons with um, filtered water, cold water. So when it gets to about kitchen temperature for the yeast, which is about, mm, I'd say 85 to, let's call it 95. That's not too hot because you don't want to kill the yeast. You can probably go a little hotter. I try to stay around 85-ish. So that's that. A beautiful smell. The base is that. Once I top it off, I'm going to take a reading with my good old handy turkey baster. Put some of that into my tube with my hydrometer. Get my original gravity and write that down. So I'm going to pour a whole bunch of water into this and then I will show you some more, folks. It's called Mexican Cerveza, baby. Lucha Libre style. Only in America. Water in there, but yes, I'm ghetto. I'm gonna do it like this um, with my uh, water filter. I usually just um, yeah, no mask. I was getting a little sweaty in there, but I usually stick a whole bunch of ice in it, like a go to the store and get a big bag of ice and I throw it in there. You know, cool it like that. But on the uh, the con of that is there could be contaminated water in the ice and when they froze it or anything, bugs, whatever. So that's not the safest way to go, as I learned, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to keep on filling this bad boy up and uh, clear to go. It's uh, kills Brita, hands down. But the only bad thing is I have to hook this up to my, uh, my faucet every time I want to fill it up. So, you know what I mean? But it, it fills up hecka quick, and it's great, great water. Um, other than that, I'm gonna pour it in there. Boom. And I'm gonna keep doing that until it is right about there. So I think that's five gallons, and this is either five and a half or six. I don't know. I'm not good at math, so. I'm just going to fill it up to there and give it a little room for uh, crowds and all that. So, right there, folks. This is a six and a half gallon primary fermenter I got with my beer kit. So, I got mine off eBay for, I got mine hella cheap. I got it for like 30 bucks for a whole kit. A couple cans of uh, hot malt extract, a whole, the whole nine. I got a good deal on it from some old guys. So, God bless that. You know what I mean? They're usually about 100 bucks, give or take. Real good ones, 150, 160. They come with a glass carboy, all that. I'm not about glass. I like plastic. It won't break. It'll never fail me. You know what I mean? So you can argue all you want about glass, uh, plastic, uh, better bottles, um, even water. Big old water jugs people use. So you know what I mean? Uh, it's an endless debate. So I'm going to go fill me up some water. And uh, actually, here, I'll just do it like this. What do you guys think? Please, babe. Please go. Over there. Please, honey, pick your uh, mess up too, will ya? Looks like you spilled a whole bunch of Captain Crunch on the floor. Please, pick your stuff up, put them over there. Yeah. Thank you. Daddy's. Oh, that's getting it. Oh, look at that. Too much, too much. Great, it's already full. Look at that. I want to see a brother do that. There. Nice cold, filtered water. Nice cold, filtered rent water. In the same time, cold. In Washington, we have pretty damn good water. Anybody who's in Cali, or even Southern Cali, down like Riverside and stuff. Man, it tastes like you're drinking out of a pool. No, no joke. So, yeah. But you do want to filter it because we got chlorine, fluoride, all that nasty stuff uh, the city puts into it. To supposed to clean it and all that. Fluoride, I don't know. It's fluoride is not good for you. But that's a whole lot of guys for my friends. Look at that. Damn, full, Britta. You suck.
boring, huh? Pretty boring stuff. Smells so good. Like a witch over a brew kettle. Uh, and I got my clear to go, eBay, for about 30 bucks, a couple filters with it, and I said it beats for the hands down, hands down. And also right now, I should be here. Do this real quick. Fill my tea kettle up. Put some water. I'm gonna put it on there. Boom. Like that. I want to boil that water, and that's what I'm gonna be rehydrating my yeast in. Got my yeast right over there. Yeast right here. Yeast. Shake it, shake it, hear it? Yeast. So, just had to show you that. Look at that. It's about, oh, maybe one more pitch of coffee there. Oh, my, oh, I'm on it. What are you doing, baby girl? What? It's a crayon. Not a pen. No, no, out of the kitchen, bud. Daddy? Daddy? Yeah. I'm videotaping. So don't touch, right? Okay. 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 Oh, no. You're going to be making brew with Daddy one day. Juice? Juice? Uh, that's water. All right, so we got it about to the six gallon mark. Now it is time to kick back and wait. Oh, don't be too excited. This last picture is only my fridge. Gotta stay watered up, baby. Folks. Now I'm going to just uh, see if I can get that. Just going to give it a little stir. Not a little, I pretty much stir the heck out of it if you can. Mix all that stuff up. Look it from the bottom. Bring that bad boy up to the top. Let it mix, baby, from the bottom to the top. We all start at the bottom. And we want to get to the top, baby. That's how life is. Look at that. It just looks golden yummy. That looks really good right now. Really good right now. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not the best cameraman in the world. Nice bubbles. Nice aroma. Oh, just the goodness. It's just, oh, if you guys could smell this. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And it's getting aeration too right now. So, hey, bud, get down. What are you doing? No, no, no. That's daddy's protein stuff. She's trying to get into my creatine and all my good stuff. My weight gainer. Look at that bam. Oh, you can't see it. No, do not. I don't advise anybody put in creatine or whey protein or any kind of workout uh, shake uh, in your beer. Probably wouldn't turn out too good, so... You never know, somebody's probably tried it, I guess. Alright, you want to clean up as you go? I got a little, if you can see, a little bit of that malt extract. Oh, and if you let it harden up, it's like, oh, it's, it's horrible. Anybody ever made caramel corn and had some of that stick to their uh, oven? You know how bad it is, that stuff is just crazy. 
So I got that stirred up. Boom, sterilized. Everything that touches your beer has to be sterilized. Has to be. Sorry, folks. I didn't, it was on Celsius. So it's at 92, 93 right now, 94. Nine, let's call it 95. So I can't pitch my yeast right now. I'm going to wait till it drops to about 92. So I'm going to wait about probably like 10 minutes, if that. Until it drops about 92, uh, I'm going to rehydrate my yeast in about 95 degree water. About half a cup is what I use. Quarter cup, half a cup per packet. So you only need one packet of, uh, I say this is ale yeast. So um, that's what came with the kit. So until then, we'll wait five minutes. Go take a swilly of my beer. And uh, come back, and the stuff will probably be 92. Let's uh, show you how to uh, rehydrate some yeast, which is simple as whatever, as simple as ever. Um, anyways, it's home brewing 101, baby, with John all day. I forgot some right here. Perfect time to uh, check your OG rating, which is original gravity. Let me. Let me do this again for you. I hope you guys can get this. So, sorry there, folks. I accidentally hit the uh, stop button. But I'm going to um, take my original gravity reading. I've got all my stuff mixed in. No yeast yet. I didn't know before. I am a rookie at this. You're supposed to take your original gravity, gravity before you put the yeast in. Before your yeast gets active and starts eating all your sugars and stuff. So, look at that. Everybody knows what that is. The turkey baster. Now it is a beer siphoner. Sterilize everything. That is your beer, 100%. That just looks golden. Oh my gosh. Alright, folks. Um, hopefully this isn't still over. Okay, I got my little thing. Here's my hydrometer. I don't know if you could see here. Where's my camera at? Yeah. Well, there's little numbers on it. And one, it's two. This is only a two-way. It just shows the gravity and the alcohol. So, or potential alcohol by volume. The ABV is what they call it. So, potential alcohol by volume. Just got a whole bunch of numbers and stuff. It's weighted at the bottom, and uh, it just floats. So, you give it a little spin. Give it a little spin. Bam, spin that bad boy. Where she stops, nobody knows. All right, we're looking at right here. And I just learned, too, that water likes to push up against stuff. So, you're going to read it just a tad below where the water touches it so like right here give another spin I don't like it when it sticks to the side it bugs me it's looking right around 10 I would say 10 30 which is not bad it's about 10 30 almost ah, 10 40 so it's not going to be a very high volume beer Alcohol wise, so and it stops about right now. 10 30. I'd say it's about 10 40. Okay, there it stops. All right, so I call that. Let's see, that's it's right on. Oh, I'd say 10 35. Let's call it that 10 35, 5 percent uh, alcohol right there. I mean, there's no alcohol in it yet because it has to ferment, but. That's how it's done, baby. So that's my original gravity. I call it 10:35 um, on the button. So I'm gonna cover this up until it reaches uh, my 92 degrees, and I'm gonna wait for my water to heat up so I can rehydrate my yeast in it. Until then, folks. Yeah, I'm back. Guess what, folks? This is our uh, last step. So look at it. It's 5:50. It's been um, 
We had Dragon the East for 20 minutes now. So, it looks cool. Ain't nothing special, you know, going on. Now I'm going to pitch my East, that's what it's called, into the warp. Easy as that, baby. That's how we do it up in Renton. If you never heard of Renton, you best better call somebody out of me. All right, folks. Some people, like before, do not stir this up. They just let it, you know what I mean? They just put their uh, top on it and let it go to town. But I am going to aerate it. Like a champion. It smells so good, folks. Give it a nice little set from the bottom to the top, baby. Stir that bad boy up. That's very bold. Look at that. Nice stirring. If anybody has questions, man, ask. I don't bite. I'm a fairly nice guy sometimes. I do not bite. It's fun. Home brewing is fun, folks. And I know most people around here drink a lot. Alcoholism is cool, man. It's only alcoholism if you go to classes for it, folks. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little sarcastic today, folks. All right, so I'm done with that tool. I'm going to stick it in my his ink, all right? Bam. Now let's go get my cap. All right, folks? I'm going to have to sit here and wait. Sit here and wait. Wait, 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 Did you start being good taping, honey? Yeah. You know, like a good girl? Okay. Yeah. Hey, watch out, bud. Yeah. Watch out. Alright, folks. So I got my lid. Airlock lid, five gallon, food grade. I'm going to give it a nice little washing, sanitize, you know what I mean? It's already good to go, but I'm just going to make sure it is extra clean. No, 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 please, honey. Please, my love. Mm -hmm. Yes, boom. Just gonna put a cap on it. Not rocket science. Mm -hmm. She's over there just playing around. Cap it. Um, that's just water. Some people put liquor in there because liquor is, you know what I mean? You can't contaminate it, it'll kill anything. I just use, you know, water, basic water. Haven't had any problems. Um, that's an airlock. It allows it to breathe out, no air to come in. Simple as that. It's called an airlock. Very cheap. All this stuff's very cheap. You know what I mean? At your home brew store. Or like me, I just bought a whole kit uh, online at eBay. Because uh, I'm an eBay freak. So, um, let me cap this real quick. Oh. Voila. Alright, folks. There we have it. Some mofo beer. Accidentally hit a put stop button again, folks. Sorry, but uh, I'm happy. I almost started singing right there, singing my beer song. Beer is done. It is all good. Now on this, oh, on the airlock, it gets goofy sometimes. 
I just wanted to put it in there. Ah, give me a problem getting it nice and tight. Ah. Bam. Now let's take a journey. Oh. Take a journey. Oh, baby. Dog. Uh, that's, that's that's the magic place. That's where the brew gets brewed. So there's my five gallons of that, or actually my bad, four gallons of apple wine. If you can see, I got my three gallon better boy. I think it's a honey wheat ale I put in there, or a honey wheat lager that I kind of forgot about. But um, so I got a whole bunch of beer brewing. I'm gonna let this sit for two weeks. Minimum, 65, 70 degrees. Got my thermometer on the side of it, so it's easy to, you know what I mean, if it cools down, it's the winter time here and there. I got a small house, so it gets kind of cold in some of these closets. So I just throw a blanket or something over them. And uh, call it good two weeks, then I'm going to uh, bottle it, and I will show you that video. But um, for now, I'm going to go and uh, use my computer skills and put all these videos together. So I can make one or two of them and put it on Facebook or YouTube. So y'all can check me out and hopefully can learn from this. You know what I mean? Because I've learned from so many videos that I've watched on YouTube or the internet, period. You know what I mean? So um, have a good day home brewing. Hope you learned something. Any questions, ask. I don't bite. You know what I mean? I'll answer it to the best of my knowledge. You know what I mean? So that is home brewing, baby. From, from step one to, you know, from A to Z. We're done here. You know what I mean? So, uh... Have a good night, have a good week, have a good whatever, have a good life, and baby, it's homebrewing, that's all I can say, happy, happy, homebrewing, baby, get her done, that's how I live it. Ness, you want to say bye-bye? Say bye. Say bye. No, she didn't want to say bye. All right, folks, you all take care, have a good night.